Wet'suwet'en Territories, August 2012. A few comrades and I hit the road to join dozens of people in the third annual Unistot in Action Camp, a convergence called by members of the Wet'suwet'en Nation to prevent oil and gas pipelines from entering into their territory. As we sped away from the visual noise of the city, the natural splendor of the Pacific Northwest revealed itself. Canyons, rivers, lakes, and mountains beckoned us to abandon our gasoline power chariot and invited us to walk and swim through them and leave behind the spectacle of industrial civilization. But even in these remote areas, the insatiable appetite of capitalism demands the further ravaging of nature. Mining highways, dams, clear-cut logging, and now oil and gas infrastructure are not only defacing the landscape, but also the cultures that have lived in this region for millennia. We're opposing these projects because we have very few areas that are pure and still in a natural state. For example, the river behind us, we actually can still drink that water. and. We still hunt this area and industry has destroyed most of our areas and we have very little left and we're going to fight to protect that for the future generations, our children, grandchildren. If we don't protect it, there'll be nothing here and we'll be saying that uh, we used to have moose and we used to have fish and they're not even going to know that as part of their diet if we don't step up and start protecting it today. After driving for over 1,000 kilometers, we arrived at the boundary of the Unistoten land, the pristine Maurice River. But before any of us could cross the bridge and enter the territory, we had to follow the free, prior, and informed consent protocol. Protocol is uh, ancient. It's thousands of years old. The land taught us how to do this, to protect it. Also to see you act out your knowledge of self, which helped us keep the integrity of the land and uh, the people. So free prior informed consent is nothing new. It's been asleep for a couple of hundred years because of colonization. Our responsibilities were taken from us, from military and from police and from oblates, Catholic Church. Uh, pretty much put the fear into our ancestors a couple hundred years back, uh, telling them that they can no longer act on their lands in the ways that they have. Much of the area of what is now known as British Columbia is made up of land that was stolen from indigenous communities. The Unistoten clan of the Wet'suwet'en Nation are asserting the rightful ownership of this forested wilderness to stop a natural gas transport project called the Pacific Trails Pipeline, or PTP. Well, the PTP project uh, is a project that um, kind of snuck through under the radar. It's a pipeline project that's proposed by the Apache Corporation. And uh, they want to run a natural gas pipeline from Summit Lake, BC to Kitimat, BC. And the spot that we're sitting in right here, right now, is a tenting area, but it's also the center point on a GPS coordinates for a right of way that they want to put through here. So we're occupying the lands and we're stopping PTP from coming in. This year's camp attracted over 150 people who came from as far east as Montreal and as far south as Florida. The camp organizers opted not to tap large environmental NGOs for material support and instead reached out to grassroots community-based allies. We were invited by Mel Basil and uh, later on by some of the other chiefs here um, to, to come and help them stand up against the pipelines. And we are all about stopping the pipelines at this point. We're all about doing indigenous solidarity and so this gets we get to do both and we get to bring a bunch of people from Vancouver who maybe have never experienced an action camp or um, you know, being, being welcomed by First Nations people on their own territory. And they get to experience that. They get to um, learn new skills and share their own and um, share food and camaraderie and culture and uh, build something. You know, we built a small city here, practically, you know. <laughs> and, uh, and 
I think it's really good for everybody's morale. You know, because people feel like they can actually do something physically. They can physically do something to stop the pipelines. You know, and you can't get funding from Tides Canada or George Soros or any large foundation to do um, direct action training. Out of the proposed pipeline projects that will cross through Eunice Totten land, Pacific Trails is the first one slated to begin construction and poses an immediate threat. The PTP project is a partnership between Apache Canada and Canada and EOG Resources formerly known as Enron Oil and Gas. The 463-kilometer PTP pipeline will connect the liquefied natural gas port in the Pacific Ocean to the Spectra Energy West Coast Pipeline with the aim of transporting gas extracted through fracking to overseas markets. Others, like the Enbridge Northern Gateway Pipeline, would transport tar sands oil from Fort McMurray, an extraction project that is devastating the nature and indigenous communities in the Athabasca region of northern Alberta. Sue Deranger is a member of the Athabasca Chippewayan First Nation, who traveled from Fort McMurray to show her solidarity with the Unistoten. They're blocking the Enbridge Pipeline, which is going to haul the bitumen from our community that is that is affecting our lives so intensely. The cancers that are there, the animals that are sick, the water that's polluted. It's, there's such a connection because if there's, if there's no tar sands, then there's no pipeline. If there's no pipeline, there's less for them to do. These dirty energy schemes not only threaten nature and indigenous people in the north, but also had global implications. If decisive action is not taken to stop the flows of oil and gas, the effects of global climate change could be catastrophic for people, plants, and animals all over the world. This is why natives and their allies travel from far away to come together at this camp. At this point, people know that, you know, I think most people realize that appealing to the government, appealing to the Harper government or the BC government is really hopeless. And uh, the, only, the only real way to stop this, especially this particular pipeline, which is already approved, the way to stop it is, is going to be to actually shut them down, slow them down, cost them money, scare their investors away. And uh, this, this is going to involve you know, going to do direct action. This camp is designed to create a culture of resistance. What we are doing is we are showing our young ones who are in this camp that there is peaceful resistance. There is also a uh, way of the warrior, and there is also um, uncompromising stance. Our territories have never been ceded. We've never surrendered anything here. Uh, th these territories belong to our people, and we have no intention of giving it up or surrendering it to any entity. Mm -hmm.